Hello, thank you to those of you who are tuning in. And I just want to introduce my dear friend, Kati Zoom. <laughs> and Kati, Kati, I have known you now for a couple of years. I met Kati because she joined into yoga in the Healing Sciences program two years ago, um, the program I lead with Loyola Marymount University. And uh, then she became one of the assistant support people for during COVID when we went online for the first time. And then this year, she's going to be assistant director to the program with me. And I'm so thrilled. And um, I, I'm just excited to talk to you and, and be here because um, I also know that not just this program, but the yoga practices that you've dedicated yourself to have helped so much in your personal life as a mom, as um, supporting your whole household in good ways. And um, and helping you through a transition of moving from Germany to the United States where having no no green card has had a huge impact for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Hi, Tara. Thank you for uh, having me. And um, I love to share um, uh, about my path. And yeah, that's... Um, that's a that was a journey the last years um yes i'm from germany and um from berlin i um was working in berlin and marketing as marketing manager i had my family um and my whole life there and i also have a husband who uh, is traveling a lot and it ended up that he was more in the us at the end and um we decided to move and to leave everything behind and go on a big adventure with the whole family. And yes, that was, of course, cool. Who doesn't want to live in LA, in California? <laughs> the big deal for me was that I know that, um, or I knew uh, that I wouldn't be allowed to work. So I had to leave my career for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, because I, I don't have the working permission here. So we made the move and it was exciting. And after the first excitement, I found myself in a complete different situation uh, than I was before. And of course, I had to adjust a lot since uh, coming from a working mom with a career, being in LA, uh, not being able to work, not being able to open a bank account, not being able to uh, sign the lease for the house, uh, not being able to buy a car or doing anything without the permission and signature of your husband. So that was uh, totally different. And um, that was a big shock after the first excitement but luckily and this is where the where everything comes together i had my yoga practice and um much more needed than ever i was practicing in berlin besides family and uh work but here of course i had much more time and um this supported me in my big transition a lot. And I'm so grateful <laughs> that I had this practice or still have it and could deepen it and um, found you, Tara. <laughs> Thank you. One of the things that I find is that often most people that I meet that I end up working with, right, it, either in this program or with their health, it, it, I find that they're usually people that are in a big moment of transition. And it's mm -hmm. usually a moment where they're seeking new footing also in life, right? Of, of, okay, what now? And how can I navigate in a way that feels like I'm in harmony with mm -hmm. the whole life? Um, and I'm curious, I mean, part of what, what that takes too is resilience when there's moments where it's bumpy and it doesn't feel like things are um, feeling comfortable or feeling like, you know, what's gonna happen and it can be, it can be really unsettling, you know? Um, I know you know. <laughs> We've talked about it. So <laughs> I just I wonder what some what practices there are some specifically that have been most helpful for you in the resilience and in this navigating a lot of unknowns until you can get your green card and have some of that back in place too. Yeah. Um of course like deepening my practice in general um is is really important, but for very important or most important is my daily sadhana, like having the, my my daily daily practice and knowing I 
can always come to it. I start my day with it. I end my day with it when I need it. I can come to uh, different practices, but having a strong sadhana is maybe the most important thing uh, to support, uh, that supported me and still supports me in the transition. And um, I mean, this is so important to, to you too, Tara, I know, because I learned from you <laughs> how important it is and how to establish it. And um, so this is this is mandatory for me. And at the beginning, of course, you had to go into it and you have to stick to it and wake up and go to it. But after a while, or no, after the years, it's it's just part of part of the day. And I love that you said that. I love I love that because I think there can be. Um, first of all, I want to say that some people don't know what sadhana is, so I'm gonna just say um, for someone who doesn't know, it's it's you know committed. Um, dedicated i would like to say spiritual practice is one way to describe it where you are committing to consistent uh, practices that support your sense of well-being your sense of connectedness um to source and to the flow of life and and nature and um and we can do that through yoga postures we can we can have that experience through chanting or breath work or um even um um reading of sacred texts and um you know um or things that are um poetic and inspirational um listening to music right there's there's so many ways um walking in nature but i uh love that you said it became something that was maybe a discipline and a practice you had to really commit to mentally in a particular way and then eventually it becomes part of just the way you're actually approaching life yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it it of course it takes discipline because when you, when you have the family life and you want to do your sadhana alone, you you wake up a little earlier before everyone wakes up, and you can do your practice. And um, especially when when you want to bring something in, you have to really be dis disciplined about it. But you will feel like then you will get easier with it. And bringing ease into it is very important too to me. Like approaching it easily and and knowing okay now i need the time i just can sit and tune in connect to myself having my time and um after let's say this discipline at the beginning it's so much easier when you have it established in your life and you can always come back to it and yeah 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 so, you know one of the things i've discovered over the years is just how different asana can be to different traditions have so many different ways of doing this so What's most important to me always is that people are um, actively involved in shaping their own in a way that makes it really authentic and really right for them individually. And that's one of the things we do early on in the program that I know you did. Um, but would you say yours keeps evolving? It sounds like it is. Yeah. Yeah, so it is. It is in, uh, evolving and, and changing. I'm, of course, yeah. going with... Uh, with the easiest thing in the summer, I'm doing it outside. In winter, I'm coming inside, having my own space, creating my own space. But also, not every morning is the same. Not, I don't feel the same every morning, so I can adjust. But um, I will always bring new things to it and um, growing with it, growing with my sadhana too. Beautiful. And then, what are what are some of the ways that you've practices you brought into the family life that have woven well with your with your family yeah i think um what i brought new also into my life because i didn't know it um in in germany was uh, chanting and kirtan bringing it in and i think this was uh, also the first thing i brought my daughter in i just took her with me and now when i'm chanting here she just joins me um she's playing them she plays piano so she tries the things on, on the harmonium i hear her singing in her room so this is i just include her in in practices and uh, also when i'm i'm doing my asana practice she is sometimes joining or just taking a book just sitting next to my mat and just just seeing me what i'm doing how i'm practicing and i also can see that she's she is making it her yoga in in her age appropriate way um but i i can tell that she sees me it's beautiful i love it yeah and that way, uh, you said those words too, that it makes it authentic uh, for them in their own way. Ah, I think you're frozen, Kati. Ah, 
I lost you. There we are. Ah, you're back again. <laughs> okay. I don't I didn't say very much. Luckily you weren't gone very long. But um I find too that I never wanted to force yoga on my son. I just yeah. Figured, yeah, I also don't want to force soccer on my son or anything. You know, I just like, okay, try this or check it out, or you know, this is what I like, you know. And I, I encourage him to try every, well, not everything, but most things <laughs> at least once to get a feel and a flavor of things in life. Um, we do that a lot with taste testing too. <laughs> taste yeah. test, see what you think of that. Um, but with yoga, I actually really um, didn't, I didn't take him to yoga classes as a kid, mm -hmm. but I did have him around the, the, the energy of it. Yeah. You know? and, and I think the energy is what actually has drawn him closer into it innately. Uh, in its own way um, yeah so through the chanting and being in the energy of that or being near me when I'm doing breath work or or doing asana practices and um, and I I think that's ideally the best way right so that the flavor of it is is part of part of life in many ways and he's picking it up too right he's making it his own yoga too Absolutely. And he shocked me and started putting his feet behind his head and said, oh, this is easy. And I'm like, it's like, well, it used to be really easy for me. <laughs> I said, I don't practice it very often anymore. But, you know, he's like, oh, Mom, what are you talking about? It's just so easy. You just flip your foot behind your head, then the other one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, but it was really funny because now he's eight and Jesse not long ago he said um oh it's starting to not be as easy <laughs> oh. it was easy at five but unless you're practicing you know he was already feeling a difference in his body at eight so I, I like that he's tracking that and being aware that oh yeah, yeah. yeah that each stage of life there might be things that are easier or harder and doesn't mean don't do them either it just means oh my body's changing changing yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, anything? I'm just thinking about how when we did the program, Sue, that we've shared, uh, yoga and the healing sciences. That there are healing sciences factors to what we were devoting ourselves into learning. It's not just asana and breath work and meditation, mm. which could be endlessly uh, a lot already. But we also get into energetics and um, more um, deeper um, organ and meridian base work too. And I, I wonder if um, that perspective shifted your your perspective even with health or wellness. Oh yeah, it did a lot. So um, um, it's, it's, and I come back to the folder because this is, this is really, because this is my heart and my essence also from, 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 from the training. We have this folder with all this wisdom in it on pages. It's like this, yeah, when you print it out. And I really, really love my folder and I'm really working in it. It's like my, my book of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always coming back to it. And during the program, of course, we read all these things and we learned and we studied with you, with your guests, with um, um, everything they brought in and we received everything, but it's still going on. You can, st I still go through my folder. I'm reading about meridians, about the energy system. And I read also my little notes I made two years ago. And suddenly it makes like, oh, wow. And it opens so many doors and I remember so so much about it. So, of course, my whole understanding is much wider now. There's so much more I, I learned and I'm still open. There are still more doors to open and to dive deeper into it. So um, it's, it's still ongoing. Even after two years, I haven't really the feeling it's, it's, it's done. I'm, 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 I'm done because it's still opening so much and I'm still learning from all what happened during the program. And we are, we are students our whole life. Um, and I love to have the, this base and this, this book, this folder, all this wisdoms with me mm -hmm. and to still work and learn with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. It's endless. I go back into my old folders from the programs that I've led and from my old my other teachers that I learn from still. Um, doesn't have to ever end really. And uh, it is, isn't it? Like as we learn our perspective shifts and we get it and it clicks, these these beautiful tools click in new ways. Uh, is really something really lovely. 
I'm, I'm looking forward to spending fall with you and the whole group that will come for Yoga and the Healing Sciences program. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you for joining with me. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you for, for the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Tara. Bye. <laughs>